up, YouTube? You twoove! Mr. King Coney live from the studio today. All right, today we're going to be doing a repost of my momentum lesson. Try and simplify it a bit. So our central question today is, why is it that when a 350-pound player collides with a 200-pound one, only one goes to the hospital? I want you to guess which one that is. Okay, first let's talk about momentum. You've heard of it before. Well, let's go over the physics definition. Objects with more momentum give more damage and take less damage when they're moving. So you can think of momentum as the impact when it's moving. The more momentum, the more damage it's going to do, and the less damage it's going to take for itself. So you can think of that with car crashes. And the formula is P equals M times V, or momentum equals mass times velocity. You may be thinking, why is momentum P? Why isn't it M? It's because M is mass, O and N were taken. So they went right to P. Okay. Here's our first practice problem. Here's that clip. So how much more momentum does the big guy have? So if we convert it to the metric system, the 150 kilogram football player is moving at two meters per second, a little bit slow compared to the 510, 75 kilogram player moving at three meters per second. Who has more momentum and how much more? Please pause the video now and do it yourself. But you're going to see the collision right here in the upper right corner. That big guy has a lot more momentum. If you multiply the mass, 150 kilograms, times the velocity, 2, you'll get 75 kilograms per meter second. That is the units for our momentum. There's no official term yet. So we just keep it like that. So 75 is the difference because the big guy has 300 and the smaller guy is 75 times three, which is 225. So there's a 75 kilogram per meter second difference. So every meter that travels, you feel 75 kilograms hitting you, which is a lot. So that's our first momentum calculation, just simply calculating momentum. This one, we're gonna be going over conservation of momentum. But I wanna tell you a story. So, a few years ago, there was a Make-A-Wish Foundation wish. This kid, huge soccer fan, he wanted to get shot on by Messi. And Messi agreed. So he shot on the kid. But here's the thing. Messi didn't hold back. And the kid was small, you know. So most people won't be able to handle a super fast ball hitting them. Only the pros. So this is what happened. The boy's arm went back so much when he blocked the shot that it broke. And the momentum was too much for his arm. And that's why it broke. But Messi felt bad. So he actually got the whole team to sign his FC Barcelona ball, which is worth millions today, which is really great. The boy was actually happy in this picture because even though he broke his arm for blocking the ball, he got this great gift and he got to meet the whole team. So let's break down the physics. Messi kicks a soccer ball that weighs 0.5 kilograms and it moves at 50 meters per second. So first step, how much momentum does the ball have? Just right off the gate, he's kicking a ball that weighs this much and he kicked it that fast. How much momentum is that? Remember, momentum is mass times velocity. So you multiply them. So the momentum is 25. So, Let's figure out how much did the boy's arm move backwards when he got hit, flung backwards. So if momentum is conserved, M1, V1 equals M2, V2. So the momentum of the ball all went into the kid's arm. So P1 is 25. The mass of his arm is 5, but we don't know the velocity. So we need to get the velocity here. So if we have momentum, we have mass, you have to divide to get V by itself. And so we have 25 is equal to 5 kilograms times V, divide, by so, divide both sides by 5, and you get 5 meters per second, or technically negative 5, because the arm flew backwards. So that's how we use momentum to figure out how much something moves or how heavy it is. So momentum is conserved, stays the same, it just changes when something collides into another object. Okay, so we're going to try a different problem. This one is a boat. A boat has 2,000 kilograms of mass and it's moving at 5. 
How much momentum does it have? Pause the video now. Let's say the boat crashes into the concrete. If the concrete weighs 8,000 kilograms, how much does it move? So you know the momentum that's gonna go into the concrete. We know how much the, mo the concrete weighs. How much is the concrete gonna move? We have to solve for B this time. All right, watch what happens. Even though the boat's slow, it has a ton of momentum, enough to destroy the dock, the concrete. And if you divide the momentum of the boat by momentum should be 10,000 divided by the mass of the concrete, you should get 1.25. So you take the momentum of the boat, it all went into the concrete. So 10,000 was the momentum. And that's equal to the weight of the concrete times the velocity of it. So you do 1,000, 8,000 is times V, so you got to divide 10,000 by 8,000. And that will give you 1.25 meters per second. That's how we use momentum in the real life. Last one, a bowling ball is thrown at 20 meters per second and it weighs five. What is the ball's momentum? And then if the pin weighs two kilograms, how fast does the pin go backwards? Please pause the video now and try and complete it yourself. Hopefully you got 100 is the ball's momentum. So 100 is equal to two kilograms times V. You divide by two and the velocity should be equal to 50. So if you divide both sides by 2, V equals 50 meters per second. Um, we can also use momentum to figure out which bat we should buy. I mean baseball bat. So if you're choosing between three different bats, bat A weighs 5 kilograms and you swing it 10 meters per second. Bat B is much heavier, and you can only swing at one meter per second. Bat C is in between. It weighs six kilograms, but you swing it a little bit slower than the first one. Which bat is best? Please try and figure it out yourself. Hint, momentum is mass times velocity. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and for staying the whole time. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.